pulled out these books the other day after a trip to the Kruger because I got an image that I thought I saw somewhere else before. So this image of little bee eaters huddled together for warmth is one that I thought I replicated when I was in the Kruger Park, only with white-fronted bee eaters. And then I thought, what other images from my childhood may be still stuck in my head and I'm going around and replicating them? So I've shot, I think, all of these birds recently. The carmine bee eater, the ground hornbill, uh, lilac wretched roller, white fronted bee eater, and even this vulture. Last year, I even got out to uh, Lambert's Bay and the gannet colony and actually saw these Cape gannets with my own eyes as well. And of course, the unforgettable Kalahari Transfrontier National Park and the wide expanses of the Nosob River windmills in the Khrut Karu or the Great Karu. I've got a picture at night of a windmill uh, with the stars above it. And of course the Valley of Desolation um, looking out uh, into the Eastern Cape. This picture of bearded vultures in Giant's Castle in the Drakensberg doesn't do them justice, and I've got a better one. And what they call the dragon's tooth. Um, again, I was up there just um, a few months ago to the top of this plateau, um, the highest waterfall in the world now. Whether you love being out in the great outdoors and in touch with nature is one of those polarizing questions. Growing up, we lived in a suburb just north of Durban, which wasn't uh, particularly uh, full of nature, I'd say. Um, we played in the odd stream, uh, you know, on the way back home from school, and we'd explore our backyard, which was quite uh, full of shale. But other than that, we were in a uh, typical suburb that was um, newly built, so you know very few trees, and um, nature wasn't uh, on our doorstep almost. But I think my parents planted that seed of the love of nature that then you know grew within us. So they would take us to the Natural History Museum every second Saturday uh, without fail. My dad would take us uh, to the beach after work and, we, and uh, we'd watch him fish and uh, you know, we'd explore the little tidal pools and the uh, surf zone uh, looking for sea lice and uh, you know, any creatures we could find. Every um, Sunday at 5 o'clock we knew that we had to be planted in front of this TV and uh, watching Nat Geo documentaries and uh, David Attenborough almost became the voice of our childhood. I think I would have been between the ages of 10 or 12 when uh, my dad bought us this set of reference books, which made us uh, firstly fall in love with the natural history of South Africa. As you can see, it's um, one of the more used books of the series. And then also the scenic beauty um, that the country holds. And I didn't know how much it influenced me until you know I was an adult myself and started working. I came to appreciate the natural beauty um, that we are blessed with here in South Africa a little bit more in my late 20s, I would say. I was uh, working as an engineer and I was earning my own uh, money so I could uh, start taking up a hobby in photography. And once I got into photography as a whole, I found that I loved uh, wildlife and uh, landscape photography. So I started uh, 
doing more trips to travel around the country and explore the wild and natural areas right on my doorstep. And then every trip back down to Durban was an opportunity to get out to the sea again and uh, you know watch the world come alive uh, as the sun woke it up. That was almost how I spent every holiday that I got, every chance or break that I got from working. And then what I started to realize uh, was that every time I um, got back to work, I would feel this um, heaviness about me. Where I was meant to feel refreshed, I almost felt remorse for returning um, to the rat race and getting back to the cycle that would then you know, earn me more money so that I can go out and enjoy the beauties of my country again. For me, I think that began to weigh me down. So I felt like I had to break the cycle. To that end, in 2019, I began studying uh, towards a field guide qualification. And in September 2019, I was a qualified field guide, but still working in my corporate role. I had plans to step away and then COVID hit. We were locked down. People weren't uh, allowed to travel anymore. We had to stay at home. But uh, while the world was closed to us, I think my mind began to open to the possibilities. In July 2021, about 18 months into COVID-19, I think I had thought about it enough and I had seen enough. After a long trip to the Kruger, I made up my mind that it was time to make that leap. So I jumped. <laughs>